Okay, so one more thing. I do it this. Oh, you started. When did you start? Just now. Just now. Yes, but look at that. Okay, so so have you done that? Yeah, the... that's what I'm trying to do. And it's not giving me. So I wanted to come back now. You wanted to do it? Welcome, welcome. Welcome guys Because I'm, I'm finding this hard to relax here.
Hello everybody, just confirm that you can actually hear me by giving a thumbs up or something. Hello IG fam, hello TikTok fam, and hello X. Hope you've had a good day. Um, it's been a busy week. Just waiting for a few more persons to join and we'll get straight into it. For guys on IG, just confirm you can hear me by leaving a comment. And for TikTok fam, do leave a comment and ensure you can actually hear me.
that's it. Okay, you can join there. You can see from there. Okay, cool guys. Um, just gonna give it a few more minutes for others to join in and then we'll kick off. Also, don't forget, if you have questions, please leave them in the comments and I'll get to them eventually. There will be a section for just Q&A, so we'll handle that separately. thing I like guys to do for me in the comments is if you can post like your very first experience with networked audio like what was your very first experience with that it would be nice to hear your comments um, for me I think in fact I think I find it funny when I think about this event back then where it could have been easily networked but this is what was done so there were three consoles of the same brand um, I won't go into the details but there was one for a certain stage that would still receive audio from so let's say there's stage A there's stage B and then there is front of house getting both stage A and stage B and in that particular setup they were using the analog cables and had to like wire them and it was first of all a lot of time wasted and just the weight of the snakes were like so they were so heavy they were heavy and it was a stadium so we're doing some long runs now this could have been easily done with audio networking but then in that particular situation there wasn't the knowledge of audio networking which is in itself funny but sometimes and this is many years ago by the way many years ago um, but it's what the lack of knowledge can actually do to us so yeah, it'd be nice to hear your own comments and just do you have any experience that was rather unique for audio networking or you had an aha moment? Also for the guys on space, I see you. Um, welcome, welcome.
Okay, let's 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 kick off actually. Let's kick off. Um, all right. So this is an introduction to digital audio networking, and again, it's just an introduction. The topic itself can be so vast, and with all the technological advancements that are happening right now, things have been changing. Um, Protocols are being updated here and there, and so it's a steady learning curve, if I can call it that. So, digital audio networking essentially is the transportation of multiple channels of audio via the Ethernet framework. Okay, so rather than using an analog cable which back then for most snakes i think the the biggest would be like 48 channels instead of having all those heavy multi cores you're going to be using cat 5e or cat 6 so that is digital audio networking it's the transportation of multiple audio channels over a network or using the ethernet framework so for us to even get to this point is due to all the technological advancements that have happened in IT in general. If these things didn't happen, then we wouldn't have been able to get to where we are today with audio and media over Ethernet in general. So we thank God for all the developments that are happening out there. Um, why? Do we need this? So just like I said in the um, scenario I painted out earlier, having three consoles of the same brand and wiring them using analog snakes, that took a lot of time. Just, in fact, it was more of a custom thing where they had to like solder on site. So you can imagine all the time that was taking the manpower and blah 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 so digital audio networks have resolved one the weight of carrying all those heavy snakes two flexibility in moving audio channels from one point to another what would be seemingly difficult has now just become uh, so easy by just using your cabling whatever cabling which is most of the time an ethernet cable cat 5e and above 5e and above these are the reasons why we have to look at digital audio networks on the surface they may seem or the devices that have this infrastructure usually seem more expensive but it's totally worth it so before we can even talk about digital audio networks we have to actually address digital audio itself and just briefly there there are two yes two things two factors that you have to consider when getting an analog signal to the digital domain sample rate and bit depth right so those are the two things we would typically be looking at and if you're not sure what sampling rate is sample rate is simply the number of samples per samples per second and a point on an analog waveform all right so if they say an audio signal is being sampled at 44,100 that means they're creating 44,100 points per second to recreate an analog waveform so that's that so we typically have 44.1k we also have 48k we also have 96k those are the popular ones there's 192 and so on and so forth but 44.1 48k 96k they're the most used out there and then the second thing is bit rate or bit depth rather so this is essentially the amplitude per point 
that is being sampled right it essentially gives you the dynamic range of the analog signal in the digital domain okay so sampling rate bit depth the common bit depths are 16 bits 24 bits and 32 bit floating so for the most part most um, systems will be running at 24 bits all right so sampling rate bit depth those two things are the major factors in conversion from um, analog audio to digital audio sorry got something here on tiktok um, and it's not going off actually let's see sure how that got there but I have to just leave it on there for now let me see if I can take it out quickly Okay, so where was I? Okay, so sampling rates or sample rate and your big depth are the two factors that actually govern how much we can push in the digital domain. So when we are now looking at a network, we have to look at the sampling rate, the bit depth, the bandwidth, and the number of channels. Those are the four factors that are involved in seeing what is involved in a network protocol or what we can be solving for a network protocol. So, in order for you to understand the network bandwidth, or the capacity of a network we will be doing a basic formula which is the sampling rate times the bit depth times the number of channels all divided by 1024 times 1024 so that is just converting kbps to mbps that's that 1024 times 1024 they're trying to get the value of the bandwidth in mbps so if you were to do this calculation, sampling rate times bit depth times number of channels times one divided by 1024 times 1024, what this would give you would, you would realize that we can actually push a fair number of channels and be in a 100 Mbps bandwidth. Okay, so what this implies is that and an audio network protocol could actually function in the 100 mbps bandwidth or a 100 mbps network okay now if we were to flip that formula and do bandwidth times 1024 times 1024 divided by the sample rates and the bit depth you get the number of channels you can actually push and say our standard gigabit network 
you'd realize we can actually get up to over 900 channels in a gigabit network now that's a lot um, one of the things though is we don't normally go that far because you still need headroom for control data metadata if you don't know if you don't know what metadata is metadata is um, data about data so if I was to use a movie for example subtitles is metadata right that's data about data okay so we still have metadata in audio so if I was to think of an example this would be maybe your battery level or RF level going over on the network to the console right okay so that's that sampling rate be depth now again looking at that formula if you manipulated sampling rates normally bit depth is usually constant again we're usually working at 24 bits but if you manipulated your sampling rate say you went from 48k to 96k you realize that your number of channels will drop so this is why you see often in um, several network devices or network capable devices um, you would see a certain number of channels at a certain um, frequency so let's say for example it can do 128 channels at 48k but if you change the sampling rate to 96k that channel count halves so it's from that calculation I hope that's clear um, if you can just give a thumbs up in the comments please okay so what are the components of um, audio networking there are basically three things cables switch and the NIC or network interface controller so um, let's start with cables for for transfer of data we would always recommend cat 5e and above so there's cat 5 there's cat 5e it has to be cat 5e and above cat 5 in itself is actually well it has so every ethernet cable has a bandwidth in itself every ethernet cable has a bandwidth in itself and cat 5 is just about 100 mbps whereas cat 5e goes beyond 100 mbps up to a gigabit right so with cat 5e that's what's usually recommended and better off is cat 6 cat 6 is cat 6 has a higher bandwidth than cat 5e and there's cat 6a cat 7 cat 8 um but for the most part you're fine with cat 6. now the next thing is should we go or oh, well let's 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 put it that way should we go unshielded should we go unshielded or shielded now you'd hear protocols recommend shielded and that's fine however i beg to argue that you are actually very okay with using just unshielded cables now shielded cables would be shielded cables would be um sorry this just came up again on tiktok <laughs> shielded cables would be useful if you're in an in a noisy environment what this means is actually like electromagnetic noise like there's heavy duty machinery there's radioactive um, activities going on in that space 
so there is now the potential to get noise induced into your signal if you're in such environments yes shielded cables are needed if you're also going a really long distance say you're getting closer to the stretch then um, shielded cable is needed however if you're not in those situations then you can actually do well with an unshielded cable another thing to bear in mind with shielded cable is it's slightly it's crimped slightly differently so you have to have that shield and the grounding attached somewhere on the connector and you also have to be careful with this so that you do not get a ground loop so it's it adds some complexity it adds some complexity but again for the most part you may not need that okay so that's it with cabling remember it's cat 5e and above because of the bandwidth okay so the next thing we said switch now this is assuming that i am in layer 2 and layer 3 which i'm getting to in a bit but you would need a switch which is essentially a hub which connects different devices together in a star configuration now the next thing will be your nic which comes with each device so for example on your laptop there's an ethernet port or an rj45 port to be precise and that is the nic for the computer so for audio guys on your consoles your stage boxes your microphones wireless microphones to be precise um this excuse me this um your RJ45 ports or what the card slot, whichever one you have, will be your NIC. Okay. All right. So, I'm, I briefly mentioned the layer two and layer three, and I'll just talk about it briefly here. For you to really understand audio networks. You need to have a fundamental understanding of the OSI model. The OSI model details different layers and how and how each layers work. Okay? So media in general exists in layer one, layer two, and layer three. Right? And obviously we would interface with things in layer 4, layer 7, and so on and so forth. But when we are discussing um, Ethernet or audio networking protocols, we are usually categorizing them in layer 1, layer 2, or layer 3. So in the OSI model, again, there are seven layers, um, but we also like to joke about an eight layer which we would call the human layer because we are controlling it and the that layer layer 8 is it often has this error code error code called id 10 t uh, if you got it just let me know um anyway so layer one is the physical layer in other words all this all that's happening here is using the ethernet framework okay so you're transmitting data using the ethernet framework there is and yes i'll explain which lay um protocols are in this layer layer two actually has this data converted to frames right so layer one would we would technically not call it networking but for the sake of what we're discussing we'll keep it at that 
it's really from layer two we start getting into networking like audio networking so layer two the data is now converted to bit frames and it's transmitted from one node to another and then in layer three we are now managing different modes and we're typically looking at IP addressing okay so layer one layer one will be again physical layer you're just using the Ethernet infrastructure so the cabling and NIC but that's about it layer two the data is now converted to frames and typically in layer two we're looking at MAC addresses right and then layer three we're looking at IP addresses okay so let's look at layer one protocols um, let's start with let's start with MADI now like I said it's not it's not really audio networking at this point but these are systems and protocols we would interface with in the audio space so I think it's fair to discuss them properly so MADI MADI is also known as AES10 it's a format that's used to share multiple channels um, the max is 64 channels so 64 channels right and MADI is unidirectional in other words one way so you can only send in one direction so if you look at slots or cards for MADI you see an in and an out okay so you're sending 64 channels one direction receiving 64 channels in another direction there is also there are some consoles that would use about 56 channels and um, that was like the very first standard for MADI so that's MADI 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 typically operates on the coaxial cable 75 ohm coaxial cable it's very reliable it's very fast and it's used across many pro audio gear digital digital i think they just stick with madi so this that's madi for you all right it's unidirectional one way okay it's also known as as10 so in case you hear someone call as10 they're referring to madi madi can also be transmitted over um, cat 6 you would need to see there's some there's some manufacturers so for example soundcraft they would have some of their boxes running madi they use madi for the most part and they're using it in the um what do you call it with the cat 6 cables again remember layer one is utilizing the ethernet framework not necessarily the protocols in it okay so the next very popular protocol in layer one as50 which is it has been made so popular by behringer or music tribe through behringer and midas products okay so with as50 it's there are actually like two variations of AS50. There's SuperMark and there's HyperMark, right? Now, for the most part, layer one protocols are point to point. In other words, I can only get from this device to the next device I am physically connected to. So, this is very common to see in let's say you have what console should we use let's say just let's use two m32s for a start you have an m32 on stage an m32 man in the house and stage box on stage for you to access the stage boxes is either you're connected the person in the house has to either be 
physically connected to that stage box say the B port or the audio signals are being sent to the front of house console via the monitor console so that's point to point I don't know if that made some sense point to point it just you just can't skip devices whereas in some other protocols you can access any device as long as it's on the network okay so AS50 typically will transmit for the eight channels and that's the super mag version on the hyper mag version you actually have more channel count but for the most part for the eight channels and um there's something i want to say okay well so with cable length that is the maximum distance you can run each protocol has its specifications but you just need to read on it but for AS50 for the most part 100 meters right you don't want to be going beyond 100 meters with AS50 because remember the longer the cable run the more um, susceptible you are to noise in that system so again it's point to point AS50 um, With regards to AS50, I'm taking my time on this because it's just so popular here. Um, with regards to AS50, there's also another device, not device, protocol, that the Music Tribe have gotten. So, Ultranet. Ultranet and AS50 are actually quite different. Um, Ultranet is a maximum of 16 channels. And... In, personally, I've always wanted to understand a bit more about Ultranet, and I think it's I find it interesting that Ultranet in itself was actually based off AES3. So if you do not know what AES3 is, it's so if you look at some consoles, you see this thing AES EBU, and that's a digital signal, right? So AES EBU or AES3 sends two signals typically a left and a right and a clock so those are the three signals that are coming through now with with um, alternate they looked at as3 and be like okay how can we blow up as3 basically so alternate is running on the four strands like the 16 channels are running on the four strands of the cat 6 or cat 5e cable so they have the 16 channels there and then you have your power on the next channel your vcc plus vcc minus and all that so if you've noticed this if you're running on the if you're running on p16s turbo sound systems I think alternate for turbo sound um, it's it can only accept two channels I believe but you can select which of the two channels I haven't used the um, IQ series or turbo sound speakers with alternate in a long time so I can't quite remember if you can select any of the two or a pair of alternate channels so you see the whole thing then you have a device like a p16d it's not working like a switch it's just a distributor so the signal the alternate signal comes in and it's buffered up basically it's amplified into eight different outputs so that's what happens with alternate and all that um, if you look at a product like the Midas DP48, you notice that it doesn't run on alternate. It actually runs on AS15. So in order to overcome the 16 channel limitation, they just couldn't continue alternate for a personal monitor that has more than 16 channels. So a DP48 
once you look at it it's running AS50 and I believe it's just at 48k so that's another thing with the AS50 protocol Supermac version um, it runs at 48k 24 bits 44.1 or 48k um, you can't I don't think you can go up to 96 on the Supermac version alright another protocol that's in the layer one um layer one category would be a net from avium so avium they make personal monitors and very nice ones um so on a net is what they run on so if you want to interface with an avium system you have to have some form of a net converter or bridge and they are pretty common out there in it is it has its own nuances for example um, on inet 16 you can go up to 150 meters and then there's another version of it that would only take you 120 meters so you can see that the specifications are different per protocol so you just need to figure out what each protocol wants okay Remember guys, if you have questions or yes, if you have questions, please post them down and we'll get to them in a bit. Okay, layer two. So with layer two, remember one of the things we said is at layer two, we're typically looking at MAC addresses and every NIC comes with a MAC address by default. Your phone has a MAC address by default. Almost every electronic device that goes online as a MAC address so we have the likes of AVB we have the likes of SoundGrid from Waves we have in fact in layer 2 there are almost almost every protocol there is proprietary AVB is the only one that's open source and made by the engineering institutes under IEEE 802.1 or so but SoundGrid that's Waves proprietary protocol Allen and it they have several so Allen and it has the DSNake which runs at 48k they have the DX they have the S-Link they have Gigase Gigas runs at 96k. Um, is there any other one? I think that's it. Now, oh, we also have CobraNet. Now, just if you've never heard of CobraNet, CobraNet is like the OG of audio networks. Like it was one of the very first, and it ran on 100 Mbps with low channel counts. And just on this matter of low channel count, let me just say this. Um, so remember the whole formula um, bandwidth times 1024 times 1024 divided by sample rate times bit rate or bit depth now if you ever do that calculation this one of the things you realize is that most most consoles that use USB will cap out at 48 channels so USB 2.0, which is at the back of most consoles, is about 480 Mbps or so. That's the bandwidth. Is that a 480 or 470? I can't quite recall. But that's the bandwidth of USB 2. So when you are now trying to, I mean, do the, doing the calculation, you may see that, oh, I still have more channels that I can put in that bandwidth of 480. However, you still need to have headroom for control data, metadata, and any other thing that could be happening in that audio stream. So that's why consoles whose channel counts are usually over 48. They do not provide the option of recording um, over USB. You have to go audio network straight up. Alright, so yeah, fun fact. Okay, so um, I'll just briefly talk a little bit about AVB because AVB 
has um, some interesting things working for itself now. So traditionally, AVB, like I said, it's open source. So it is implemented by, or however the manufacturer decides to, right? So Presonus runs on AVB, Motu runs on AVB, RME devices run on AVB, Avid runs on AVB, but we've had a challenge with AVB where the way it's been implemented by each manufacturer may be different, so there isn't exactly interoperability. That is, just because Presonus is on AVB and RME is on AVB, they can work together. No, that was that is not the case. Now, with AVB, you do need specialized switches. Like, you just can't take an off-the-shelf switch. You have to get an AVB certified switch. So it's one of the intricacies with AVB and I also think that was why it didn't like hit as it should have because it's a very good protocol, time sensitive, fast. Um, yes, did I mention layer one protocols are actually very fast, like double digit microseconds and um, AVB boasts time sensitive um, data, um, data transfer. So. AVB had that going for itself, so it didn't work too well, but then there is something called Milan, which I will come back to in a bit, but all I'll say is Milan is now formed by industry players, with, I think this alliance came together in 2016 or 2017, and they, and they just... Um, decided to like put together a protocol which is free open source for the industry by the industry anyway um moving on stuff like sound grid sound grid again is layer two sound grid is layer two and it works with regular standard switches and ethernet infrastructure so CAT6 cabling and all that. And because it's layer two, when you pop up on, if you're in a Waves console or you are using Waves processing, because again, well, let me finish my statement. If you're, if you're using a Waves console or Waves processing, you'll be seeing MAC addresses, right? Now, for people who want to use Waves SuperRack or SuperRack, um, sound grid to be precise um, why you'd want to do that is because it offers you lower latency than a usb connection and higher bandwidth and also the processing power is on the is on a distant server a waves server and latency i've just mentioned that the latency is a lot lower so you would need to be on a sound grid server i mean sound grid network to be able to integrate that. Um, for Allen and Heat stuff, um, like I said, they have different protocols depending on the product you're using. So Disney was like the first version and I believe it's capped at 48 channels. I believe it's capped at 48 channels at 48K. Um, so you see that on the QU series, I think on the GLD series as well and then when you look at S-Link you see S-Link on the SQ series and um, the uh, Allen and it mixer so there's this there's this systems they kind of put together for that so that's like H AHM and then as you step up into bigger spaces like you're in the Avantis and D Live, you'll be getting the Gigas Gig Ace card and these ones run at higher sampling rates, can take more channels and so on and so forth. So they've they've provided different protocols for different devices. So that's pretty much it for that part. Okay, so 
moving on layer three so layer three protocols again at this point we're not talking ip addressing um layer three protocols first of all are a bit more complex than layer two layer two um, protocols are they are more plug and play layer one two is like pretty plug and play that's why in some spaces like muddy is not going anywhere right layer three is a little bit more um more complicated to implement especially but it offers more flexibility yeah so right now taking the crown in layer three dante dante is owned by a private organization called Ordinate and they've been getting a lot of market share because they've just created a protocol that works. Any device with the Dante chipset can communicate with each other. Right? And so it has been widely adopted. Um, again, it works with standard networks you have to use a gigabit switch and for people who use um, this thing for people who use the um, what do you call it sorry excuse me so for people who use dongles you would have to make sure you are on a gigabit dongle now will it work with a 100 mbps dongle yes provided you are not recording multiple channels like many channels so if you're doing something like 32 channels 24 channel counts you'll be fine but the moment you start getting up there you have bottlenecked your recording system so again a gigabit switch is needed um and like i said in this place we are now looking at ip addressing so each device has to now get an ip address and if you decide to use dhcp which is dynamic this will be given by the switch you connect to if you decide to go static this means you're manually entering those ip addresses okay now dante is fantastic it's it has created so many um, opportunities for example sending dante over like larger networks like a wan1 wider area network so you can have your organization here say you can have a studio say in so for us in nigeria you can have a studio here in lagos and you're sending audio over a dante stream to abuja like Dante is that powerful and again it requires some proper infrastructure it's not as tolerable as say layer one protocol there are some things that just have to be in place for it to work effectively so that's Dante um, Dante has Dante virtual sound card which um, allows your computer to basically be an audio interface so you can now stream 64 channels in 64 channels out out of your computer um, if you want higher channel counts you would have to go for a pci version which is literally a card and that's probably just for computers like desktops okay another um another like big player in the layer 3 realm will be QLAN from QSC. Um, QLAN, not so much in the live world, but in integrated systems, QLAN is very popular, it's very powerful and very helpful. Now, QLAN also, well, let me even be more precise. You can have a QLAN enabled device that also supports Dante, right? Then we also have Ravenna, which is from Lao, or Lao adopted it. I'm not even sure how it goes with that, guys. 
but Ravenna is another layer three um, protocol, and it's it takes it's um, it takes its or the basis of Ravenna is based on AS sixty seven. So AS sixty seven is a standard that allows interoperability across layer three networks. In other words, because in layer three we are just looking at IP addresses, AS sixty seven was created to connect or be the bridge. So if you see on a Dante controller when you may be patching stuff, there is an AS67 mode. And basically what that means would be you are now making a channel AS67 compliant. So just just create a scenario here where you have this channel that's AS67 compliant. What you're saying is now that channel can be sent to another layer 3 protocol. Say for example, QLAN. Right. So there is all of that in layer 3. So AS67 is something that we're, we're looking forward to a lot and seeing that um, because where the industry right now is moving to is interoperability. And that has like AS67 is going to be something to watch out for. Now, I spoke about Milan earlier. Milan is is something that I'm just imagining what could come out of it. Milan has been in the works for a while. Nowadays, we are seeing more and more um, devices that are Milan certified, right? And Milan is free, like as a, if you are someone who builds speakers, for example, and you say you want to put an audio network protocol. Milan is one that you can actually try because it's like the document is actually out there on GitHub. You can just go about implementing it and then taking your device for testing. So Milan has major industry players in it. It has DMB Audio Technique, it has L Acoustics, it has Neutrik, it has RCF, it has Personas, it has Motu, it has uh, Maya Sound, it has Adamson. So you see all these devices now bearing Milan capable or Milan certified. What that just means is an Avid system will easily talk with an L acoustic system in the AVB realm. And it still bears all the positive traits of AVB. So yeah, that's that. Please, if you have comments, please drop them. Comments or questions, please drop them below. So something that I'm looking forward to in the future though is would we be able to stream audio channels over Wi-Fi um, there's a company called audio fusion they have a solution that I've personally not explored but it kind of works and if you think about the way NDI, NDI is a protocol for video which transmits video data wirelessly, right, over a wireless connection. Audio is much lighter than video. So they've kind of done this thing where there's a low latency monitoring and they've created this solution. I think it's is it something caster and for them, the company is audio fusion you can go check it out and for them you are now able to monitor real-time audio with your device i think it has to be an apple device um, even the computer running it it has to be an apple device so on your own phone you're now streaming audio so you're using your headphone jack to receive audio over the network 
um, it hasn't gained as much traction but as I said earlier in the beginning where there is constant improvement in the IT space there there is the potential for the bandwidth of Wi-Fi to be so high that we can actually transmit audio over it um, to be nice to see so I do hope we get there so does anybody have questions Anybody? So one of the things, um, some, some one of the things that people have to also think about while putting together a system is pretty much which protocol do you want to follow? Like, should you be on a layer one or a layer two or a layer three? And like I said, layer 3 um, protocols, they offer you the most flexibility, slightly more complicated to set up though, um, but flexibility is guaranteed. Whereas layer 2, they are more straightforward, sometimes more reliable, and then you also look at what device you really want to use. So for consoles, are you picking a console that has a wide variety of network options a wide variety of network options in other words can you say oh you look at the manufacturer and you're like oh okay we have so 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 and so so i can go from sound grid to madi to dante you know like you should be able to stay open and remember with layer one you're not as flexible because it's a point-to-point -point system so everything has to go from one point to another and then send back like that so i'm still just waiting do we have any questions as we round up Okay, so it seems like there aren't any. So I hope this session was helpful and informat informative. Um, I look forward to seeing you out there in the field and doing your thing. And yes, work hard, rest well. Have a good evening, everybody.